Hello everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. My name is Shashank Tyagi and I welcome you all to Kantha series of Indian polity based on Lakshmi Kant. Our today's chapter is Making of Indian Constitution. You need to categorize your understanding under following heads starting from demand of constituent assembly. Now, coming to the basic word constitution. What this concept of constitution entail? Like you read in history, ancient, medieval and modern, we divide history in following heads to actually have better understanding. Similarly, our political concepts means concept of, you know, prime minister, concept of president, concept of king, concept of rights, concept of duties. So all of these things which you read in polity and you actually they have evolved with time. And in the modern period, this idea of constitution became popular. So first of all, what is idea of constitution? The word constitution comes from the word constitute. It is made up of some fundamental laws on which this particular territory is going to be governed. These fundamental rules. And why you need certain rules? You need these rules to have stability, to have security. Now, rules were already there in British India. Why we, you know, were having this need of having separate constitution? Because the rules were made by Britishers earlier for their own benefit, although for having sound administration, which serves them. But since now India was supposed to get independence, we wanted rules which serve our purpose. And that is why we needed certain laws, certain basic frameworks should be which can be kept under one document which we can call our constitution which can fulfill the aspirations of that generation and the upcoming generation so you, you should not say that constitution is a holy book it is a functioning manual it is a evolving tree with time due to, after several amendments interpretation by our uh, higher courts Supreme Court, High Court, the idea or these concepts mentioned in constitution have evolved with time. So now it's a modern concept, but why specifically it became popular in modern period? Why? Because in medieval period, the idea of divine rights of king was prevalent, divine rights. So what do you understand by this word divine rights? What comes into your mind? Kya dimag mein aata aapko? Divine means God. Right? So, divine rights of king. So, earlier the idea of king was prevalent, monarchies were prevalent, and it was thought that king is representative of God. King is a blue blood person. There are commoners which are made to be ruled by a king who is representative of God. If king is good, then it's good for you. But if king is bad, that is also good for you. Because you must have performed certain, you know, uh, evils and God wants to punish you so that you can purify your soul. So my friends, these ideas have ruled humans from ancient to the modern period. And welcome to Indian polity. Today we are going to talk about how this idea of constitution was taking shape. Now, what was the demerit of this idea? Now king can abuse you. And that abuse was considered legitimate. That was the problem. Now, that's why this idea of constitution based on contract, social contract to be precise, became popular. It means now the government is going to function on certain basic rules and these basic rules are going to be mentioned in constitution. And who is deciding these basic rules? People. People. So it means who is going to be the source of power? People. And that is why my friends, in our preamble, the first line is, we the people of India give ourselves this constitution. Right? So this idea is actually solving the problem which was prevalent in medieval period. Right? So I hope the basic part is clear. Now, Coming to the story of Indian constitution. So this constant assembly 
this concept was agreed upon based on cabinet mission plan the plan which was which was actually circulated during this may of 1946 and the by the time of july certain provisions of this uh, cabinet mission plan which talked about how the members of uh, this constituent assembly are going to be elected and nominated the plan the plan was mentioning the process and that election even got completed by july 1946 take a look over the speed execution right so i use the two i use two words here and upsc also made a statement in prelims uh, 2016 so constituent assembly members some were elected and others were nominated now elected ones these elected were from <clears throat> british provinces so in british provinces there were provincial assemblies already there right provincial assemblies for example we have state legislature right at the level of state so similarly provincial assemblies at the level of provinces the members of these provincial assemblies were not directly elected by the all the you know people means concept of universal adult franchise was not there they were directly elected but by limited franchise as i told in the previous session only around 10% indians were having this right to vote so it means <clears throat> if these are provincial assembly and these are seats of these members and there is presiding officer and these are the people so now only few people say 10% people were getting power to vote and decide who are going to be member of this provincial assembly right where is provincial assemblies now members of these provincial assemblies these people these fellows who are sitting here now these people are going to decide who are going to be member of constituent assembly from their provincial from their provinces it means from their provincial assembly ab isme bhi ye bhi ho sakta hai that they themselves want to nominate themselves or you can say they themselves want to actually participate in the election or aisa bhi ho sakta hai this can also be possible that they want to uh, elect some someone other right this is also possible please understand this difference sometimes these nuances are not clearly mentioned in your lakshmikant but upsc can make actually uh, you can say question on these nuances so i'm repeating again these are the total people in this particular province consider united province right which we call now uttar pradesh now only 10% people were having right, power to vote now <clears throat> they voted these members so this was direct election of these people right so that is why this was direct election but when it comes to membership in constituent assembly this was indirect election indirect election why indirect election because member in constituent assembly were not getting elected by these people They, these people elected these and now these provincial members were participating in election of members who are going to represent their province in constituent assembly right and what was the method which was used it was proportional representation proportional representation and some of you might think sir what is this proportional representation it is always confusing no no, no. there's no confusion as such proportional the word represents <coughs> when it comes to constituent assembly the whole constituent assembly we need to ensure that we are fair with every province and for that we have made this method okay on that we are going to have this election and in this election how many seats can be actually filled by a particular province this will be based on population since number of seats allocated to this particular province say this province is uh, up united province so up ko kitni seat milengi it will be decided on the basis of population of up if there is another province which has less population than up then definitely that particular may have only two seat in constituent assembly right so it means direct election of in const in this provincial assembly okay and from there indirect election in constituent assembly and 
Pro why proportional representation? Because seats allocated in constituent assembly are based on population you have. And when I say population, this will be total population, right? Not just population who are actually allowed to vote. Okay, I hope this is clear. Now, as you can say, it was formulated to, uh, what was the purpose of constituent assembly? Purpose was that we want to make a constitution which can be used to facilitate the power transfer, sovereign power transfer. Because now we want our sovereign government. We want to get independent. So how this can be done? This job was given to constituent assembly. Okay. Now, so this constituent assembly had in total 12 sessions. And there are many surprising facts which you are going to see in this lecture. When I use the word constituent assembly, what comes into your mind? There is one body and there are some fixed members. There were some fixed members. As you must have seen some data in composition part of constituent assembly, right? But my friends, the idea of cabinet mission plan was not so direct. Okay. First of all, there was no fixed membership in constituent assembly at a particular point of time. What does it mean? It means that your yeah, seats were there, seats were fixed. But when it comes to membership, membership was not fixed. It means many people resigned, some got died, and some who were not getting nominated from a princely state because princely state was saying, no, 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 we are not going to be part of constant assembly. Then they later actually uh, started sending their representatives in constant assembly. So at one particular time, you cannot say that there was a fixed membership. Allocation of seat was there. Allocation was fixed, you can say, but membership kept on changing, right? So these were the 12 sessions. Now, demand. So for the first time, the demand for constant assembly was raised by Mr. M. N. Roy. So when you open your Lakshmika on the first, first page itself of this chapter, so you find a word, radical democracy, democratism. So this idea of radical democratism comes from the idea which M. N. Roy was supporting. He wanted to bring radical democracy in India. And for that, he was demanding, oh, we should have a separate constant assembly of, of our own. Now, the idea of radical democracy supports that there should be maximum equality and maximum liberty in upcoming India. We should devise a system where there is maximum liberty and maximum equality. So, when it comes to M. N. Roy, he's a, he's a, he was a communist who once was against Congress, then he was part of Congress, then he went out of Congress, and then he started his own party, and he, he started supporting radical humanism, and within that, radical democracy. But we are going to take, up, take this up in some other time, other lecture. You can put it in comments if you want this discussion to happen with you here. But today our focus is on making of Indian constitution. Now, in 1935, Indian National Congress demand to frame constant assembly, our own constant assembly. In 1938, Jawaharlal Nehru, he raised this point that there should be free and fair, no external influence when it comes to making our constitution. It was 1938. And at that point of time, Nehruji was saying that we want members of Constituent Assembly to be elected through universal adult franchise. It means every adult person registered as voter in Indian territory will be allowed to participate in voting for members of Constituent Assembly. Now, why he was supporting this? Because he was well aware with the idea of constitution. As I told you, it's a contract. People coming together and agreeing, yes, we want these laws. So in this way, he was thinking that people will appoint some representatives. And now these representatives on behalf of people will participate in constitution framing process. This will, this constitution will have more legitimacy in the eyes of people because people will think, oh, we have participated in constant constitution making process. But although this universal adult franchise based election of the constant assembly members never happened due to practical reasons, as I told you, 
election happened from provincial assemblies and there was another idea nomination that nomination happened through princely states it means there was no election to the member for the members who are going to be part of uh, constant assembly from princely state directly wh whoever is the authority there they, are, they were allowed to nominate their person in constant assembly that's why i use two words now august offer we also talked about this in brief in the previous session since it is connected to constant assembly just take a look in 1940 we saw war in europe hitler was all set to attack britain and at that point of time britain without taking consent from indians I declared that now Indians are going to be used or you can say participate in World War II with British forces. So on this point, many Congress leaders were furious why our consent was not taken and they denied their support. At that point of time, Britishers w wanted that it is point of time where you should support Britishers because otherwise fascist forces will actually claim the land. So at that time, Indian Congress made two demands. One, complete independence for India after this war ends. Second, formation of interim government during war. When I say interim government, interim means short-term government. And this short-term government will have Indians on key positions. That was the demand. As a response to that, British Viceroy Linko, he agreed on certain points. And the offer he put forward was considered as August offer. But he was using the word dominion. That dominion status will be given. And at that point of time, Indian National Congress and many other parties rejected this offer. After that, we saw Cripps mission coming in. So later, India accepted August offer as Britishers accepted the demand for independence and independent constitution after the war. This point also be... Uh, you know, kept in your mind because later Indian National Congress, they agreed. Okay? And why they agreed? They thought it can be the first step. Later, we can also claim sovereignty. Right? And you should also, uh, at this point of time, I would like to ask you a question. Just search about the status of Republic of Canada and Australia. Can you call Canadian system or Canadian state, you can say nation, as a, uh, an, you can say a sovereign nation? Can you call it sovereign? So what kind of system they have? They, because they have uh, the crown as their head of state, means British crown as their head of state. So same idea was proposed by Lilingo. Later we accepted that, okay, we will see it. But times change later and that's why we rejected nahi, ab dominion nahi. we need sovereignty now a draft proposal on framing of independent constitution after the war but it was rejected by muslim league because muslim league wanted separate constituent assembly for two nations now what happened now came cabinet mission now the scheme cabinet mission proposed before Indian National Congress, Muslim League and some other parties, it was accepted. Although principally they wanted that uh, there should be separate constant assembly, but the scheme they proposed, the method they proposed, it was agreed. So INC and Muslim League both agreed, Cripps, Pathic Lawrence and A.V. Alexander were part of this. Please remember these names because UPSC has asked question on these facts. Now. Some of you might be wondering, what scheme was there in cabinet mission plan that even Muslim League agreed to be part of one constant assembly? Although it was, it was rejected earlier, right? In Crips. So this was the scheme. It means there will be one constant assembly, but within one constant assembly, there will be three sections. This information is not there in your Lakshmi Khan, but you should know about it. Punjab and Northwest, Bengal and Assam, and rest of India. Three sections within one constant assembly. Okay. Now, take a look. Punjab and Northwest. Now, if you take into mind, you know, just think. Punjab and Northwest and Bengal and Assam. The provincial assemblies in their, these areas were having majority of Muslim League. So, Muslim League thought, okay. So, if 
these are the separate sections within this constituent assembly and members of Muslim League, they will actually be the key players in appointing people who are going to be part of these sections. So that is why they can drive the provisions on their own. Means they will have, you know, major say. That was the idea. But later, Muslim League also, you know, boycotted this particular constituent assembly. They rejected this because at that point of time, Muhammad Ali Jinnah was, you know, on fire. He was, you know, spearheading a major campaign that there should be two nation. And later we know, know that how this two nation theory was accepted. So, originally the idea was having these three sections, but this three section based constituent assembly never worked. Okay. So, this one rest of India. So, actually there was no rest of India. There was one constituent assembly for all of India. So, actually this happened, but this was part of the scheme. Okay. You should know about it. Now, composition of constituent assembly. So, constitution under this cabinet mission plan. So, th this composition was constituted under cabinet mission plan. They agreed. 389 members honge. 296 British India and 93 princely state. When I say British India, it means the, these will be representing the provinces, right? And they will be elected and they will be nominated by princely states. Now, take a look. The assembly was to have proportional representation, as I told you, right? Proportional representation, it means uh, based on population. We are going to ensure that seats are allocated so that our constant assembly composition is fair and more representative. Okay. Now, as I told you, in May 1946, cabinet mission mission plan got circulated and it was accepted. And in July 1946, elections were done. So this process was expedited under the supervision of reforms office. And this reforms office was working under viceroy office. Okay, please remember this fact. UPSC may play around these you can uh, lines, and th this particular information is not there in Lakshmi Kant. Now, now each province and princely state was allotted in proportion to their respective population. I have already given you an example. Roughly one seat allocated every million population. One seat for every million population. Just remember the the uh, matrix. Now seats allocated to each British province were to be decided principally into three communities. Now, what is this? Consider United Province. In United Province, you have different members of provincial legislative assemblies, right? They are directly elected by the people by limited franchise, right? Now, my friends, take a look or just remember what we were discussing in historical background of Indian Constitution. I talked to you about concept of separate electorate, right? Now, in cabinet mission plan, they said, we are going to divide the representation in this constituent assembly into three heads. It means Muslims, Sikhs and general. So who are going to be general? Accept Muslims and Sikhs, right? Obviously, you would think, yeah, Muslim league would accept this, right? The representatives of each community were to be elected by members of that community in the provincial legislative assembly. Jaise aapko bataya, in, uni in United Pro Province, UP, you have Sikhs, Muslims and other general, right? Now, the Muslim community members who are part of this Provincial Legislative Assembly, they are going to vote for who is going to be rep their representative, means representative from UP as well as Muslim in Constituent Assembly, who will be representative of Sikhs from this particular provincial legislative assembly in constituent assembly and similarly from general. So, this was the categorization. Okay. Now, voting was to be by the method of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote. So, this method is also later adopted in Indian constitution. We use it, for example, president, right? So, in president chapter, I am going to conduct the proper election here. Okay, and I'm going to tell you in detail how this proportional representation, the single transfer vote works. Okay, now the representatives of princely states were to be nominated, already told you that nomination from princely state and from provincial legislative assembly election and how this election I've just told you. Okay, now 
Now, can we all agree on this point that constant assembly composition is partly elected and partly nominated, right? Elected from provincial legislative assembly, nominated from princely states, right? Now, the members were to be indirectly elected by the members of the provincial assemblies, as I told you. Why indirectly? Because people were not directly, people, this people in United Province were not directly electing member in constant assembly. They have already elected these provincial assembly members and now these provincial assembly members are electing the who is going to be part of constant assembly from their area, from their category, right? Who themselves were to be elected on a limited franchise already give, given you the example, right? Now election July, August 1946, Indian National Congress won 208 seats, Muslim League won 73 seats. Now, many people have this story in mind that later since Muslim league boycotted this constant assembly so their members did not participate it. and later we had this two nation theory successful and that is why creation of pakistan happened and this muslim league members moved to pakistan this is what you know right but this is not the complete truth there were some muslim league members who chose to remain in india yes and they were part of constant assembly but they got the seat on the basis of Muslim League seat, right? For example, from United Province, okay, this is an interesting information that some people uh, who were in constant assembly were there, they chose to be there and they were from Muslim League, okay? So when I'm saying, when I'm giving certain information which is not in Lakshmi Kant, all the sources I share in my Telegram group, which I, sh uh, which you know, Shashank Tyagi for you, you can search. Now, the 93 seats allocated to princely states were not filled as most of the princely states were not agreeing to this, this uh, scheme of constant assembly. They did not, they wanted to claim their power, right? And decided to step away from constant assembly. Although slowly, many, cons many princely states started sending their representatives. But Hyderabad state did not send, it, send even a single member in constant assembly till the last point of time. Comprised representatives of all sections of Indian society, Hindus were there, Muslims were there, Sikhs, Parsis, Anglo-Indian, Indian Christians, SCs, STs, including women. Now, so by this particular last line, I hope it is quite clear to you that our constant assembly were truly representative in nature. There was no one left behind. Now, some of you might be thinking, sir, since com in composition, 208 seats were of Indian National Congress. It means... The way Indian National Congress wanted to mold our constitution, that's how Indian constitution must have got molded. But the point is, they adopted the method of consensus in constant assembly debate. It was not pure majority basis making of Indian constitution. And this decision was taken by the, with the, by the foresight of our uh, constitution framers that if majority votes majority voting is the basis of including certain provision of Indian constitution, then it can be a question on the legitimacy of our constitution in future, right? And that is why consensus was taken. There were a lot of deliberation discussion. Now, working of the constituent assembly. So, first meeting happened on December 9, 1946. And at that point of time, considering the seniority, Dr. Sachidanan Sena was declared as interim president of this constituent assembly. And why you need a president? Because you have to ensure a proper functioning. Who is going to tell that this, this is how we are going to manage the working of constant assembly? You always need a presiding officer in such a scheme so that proper functioning can be ensured. Now, as I told you, Muslim League boycotted. Now, December 11, Dr. Rajin Prasad and H.C. Mukherjee. Dr. Rajin Prasad as president got elected and S.C. Mukherjee as vice president. You should keep in mind, this is a basic fact that Gandhiji was not part of constituent assembly. Now, take a look over these questions. First, it's, it's, it's the basic one. Bachpan mein aap jab cricket khelte the, so first ball used to be a trial ball, na? So this is a trial ball. All of you know, 9 December, right? Now, second question, which of the following provisions of the Indian constitution of were immediate effect on 26 November 1949. As our constitution got finalized, it means the word used is anointed. On 26 November 1949, certain provisions were 
actually applied on this date. Whereas the full-fledged constitution got enacted on 26 January 1950. We, uh, we actually agreed on this date because of the, the Poon Swaraj resolution which actually got raised on 26 January. Now, take a look. Citizenship election emergency provision federal structure. Answer is citizenship provision, election and there are other provisions which were associated with provisional parliament. Okay, so answer would be 1 and 3. Okay, now objective resolution, a famous speech and the document which is connected to the start of the working of constant assembly. As the word suggests, objective, the purpose of this speech and this particular document was to bring a speech before this constant assembly telling them what we want to achieve. These are the principles. To ensure these principles, we need certain, you can say, provisions in the Articles of Indian Constitution. So, this speech was given by Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru and this resolution was moved on 13 December 1946. Those who are wondering, what is this resolution? So, resolution comes as a proposal. A particular member in Constituent Assembly or in legislature, they will stand up by taking permission of, from the presiding officer, sir, we want to have this resolution. So, presiding officer will say, okay, take it, start with now. So, they will present that honorable members of the constituent assembly, I, I think that all powers, we should consider this, that all powers of the constitution of India are going to be derived from people of India. Independent and sovereign India is what our constitution is going to give. Promotion of peace and welfare, safeguard minority, tribal, backward sections. Freedom of thought and expression is going to be one critical feature of our constitution. Justice, social, political, economic, we are, our constitution is going to ensure for the people of India. So he gave the speech and he said, I move this resolution. Now, there will be a, there will be a process in which people will participate and they say, yes, we also agree, yay, 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 we also agree. So when majority of the people agree, yes, this should be the objective resolution of constituent assembly, it means most of the people have agreed, majority of the people have agreed, yes, that this is, these are going to be the fundamental features of our constitution. This objective resolution later became preamble of India, which gives us the philosophy of Indian constitution, right? Now, Six princely states became part of assembly initially stayed, which initially stayed away. Now, changes after Indian Independence Act 1947, the first major change, it changed the stature of constituent assembly itself. For the first time, constituent assembly was declared as sovereign. This act was passed in British Parliament. And now, British Parliament said, before this, when, before this, what was happening? That before convening any session of this constant assembly, they used to take permission from Britain. But now, in this 1947, they are declaring that now this constant assembly is sovereign in itself. It means now no permission need to be taken from Britain, right? And this constant assembly is sovereign to make Indian constitution as well as work as Parliament of India. Parliament of India. So, some of you might be thinking, why we need Parliament of India? We needed Parliament of India because you need, on day-to-day -day basis, you need ancillary law, supportive law, right? And these laws can be, dis these bills can be discussed and can be made law in this constituent assembly when it is going to work as Parliament of India. So when constituent assembly was working just for the making of Indian constitution, at that time it was being presided, headed by Dr. Rajin Prasad. But when same constant assembly members are sitting together as a parliament, then that this particular assembly was headed by Mr. G. V. Mavlankar. Now, became fully sovereign, became legislative body, it became responsible to frame constitution. Whenever the assembly worked, the constitution body, Dr. Rajin Prasad, I told you, now, Muslim League withdrew from the assembly and it reduced the total strength of the assembly to 299 from 389. Basic fact, the strength Indian provinces reduced 299 to 296 from 299 from 296 and that princely states 70 to 93. These are basic facts. Now, another question for you that you have to attempt and you have to answer in comments. 
I'm going to upload this PDF in Telegram. You can find, and you can find answers hidden in this part of PDF. Okay, when you are going to see the PDF, answer will be hidden in this part. Okay, now by this question, I want to tell you one type of question is based on membership of a particular committee. Okay, committee because constant assembly was not working like this is a constant assembly and these are the members sitting and now all of them are discussing same same particular same point and now they are going to decide okay we are agreeing on point number one let's add into Indian constitution this is not how Indian constitution framing was being done so what happened that constant assembly itself got organized into several committees and these committees were given special job that you have to work on this particular issue you have to work on this particular issue now these con these particular committees used to present their research report their discussion deliberation their final output before constant assembly then constant assembly would discuss on that and based on this discussion consensus building then it was agreed ki okay now we can add into draft constitution right although there was second reading there was third reading so that in future if some people have some arguments to add on something which agreed upon earlier then you can also add in the second reading so such kind of deliberation was happening during constitution making process so my friends it was not a uh, you can say copy paste work right lot of deliberation discussion was going on now first president dr arjun prasad all of you know now drafting committee ubsc has asked question on members of drafting committee so these are the this is the list of members of drafting committee and the chairman was Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, right, was also known as father of Indian Constitution due to the kind of efforts, contribution he has made to Indian Constitution. So you can remember, you know, this particular committee by making some mnemonic. As I told you, there are only two ways your memory is going to register some information and reproduce easily in exam. That is, if you have, you know, a lot of interest in that particular information. For example, you can easily remember your first movie or first acts of excitement which you have done in your life. You can easily recall them, right? Interest. So, have this kind of interest in your subject. This is one way. Second is revision. When you keep on revising on a particular interval, you practice, get this information and use this in MCQ. That is a way to register more and more information in your memory and reproduce in exam. Right. So I was saying interest. So interest can be produced by actually making some mnemonics. Some funny mnemonics can be used. Toppers use this, these methods so that they can organize information in their head. Gopal Krishna Munshi was playing TT with Sayyad Rao. So Gopal Krishna Munshi was part of drafting committee and when they were actually they, they used to get tired of this discussion deliberation so they had this TT table in within the conference room and they used to play TT and who were playing Gopal Krishna Munshi and uh, Sayyad Rao so these keywords means Gopal so they will give you this the, uh, these uh, you can say options on the names and you can easily recollect uh, Gopal, Gopal Swami Iyer, Krishna, Krishna, Munshi right so this is a hint you can use now 26 November 1949. Now, constitution was passed containing 394 articles and 8 schedule. Yes, but final election happened in 26 January 1950. Right? Now, another question for you. This is also a, you know, very direct kind of question. But these kind of questions are also asked. Basic facts. Who calligraphed the Indian constitution? Yes. In comments. Now, this is information on this. Now, timeline of formation of constitution of India. So this is a quick timeline so that you can recollect the information, revise it easily, right? If UPSC makes three statements, four statements and says that arrange the following in exact chronicle order, chronological order of making of Indian constitution. Then you can remember on 6 December 1946, formation of constitution assembly in accordance with the French practice. In 1946, 9 December, we had the first meeting. 11 December, we had this 
President appointed Dr. Radhin Prasad. This information shared with you. 13 December, objective resolution already discussed. 22nd Jan, Jan, objective resolution was anonymously adopted. So at this point of time, it was proposed, discussed, and it was adopt, adopted. And please remember, uh, objective resolution was not adopted on the basis of majority vote. I gave you example because this is how resolutions work in our legislative system. But as Constituent Assembly was majorly focused on, was focusing on building consensus. So it was unanimously adopted. Everyone agreed on that. Okay. 22nd July 1947, Indian national flag was adopted. Then 15 August 1947, achieved independence, split of dominion of India and dominion of Pakistan. My friends, dominion word is being used because still the constitution of India has to be enacted and this enactment we declared ourselves as sovereign. Right? That is why dominion word is used. 29 August 1947, drafting committee appointed with Dr. B. R. Ambedkar as the chairman. You can see, in 1947, Dr. Ambedkar and drafting committee is coming into picture formally, 16 July. You see, along with Harind Komar, V. V. Krishnan presided the, uh, the Constituent Assembly. Then 26 November 1949, we have Constitution of India and you know this adopted anointment ceremony we can say that the word is anointment 24 january 1950 you have last meeting of the assembly constitution of india all signed accepted with 395 articles 8 scheduled 12, 12 22 parts now 26 january 1950 constitution of india came into force it took two years 11 months 18 days at a total expenditure of 6.2 6.4 million to finish it so this is the basic basic chronology right give uh, go through this two times and it will be set in your mind. Now, criticism. Criticism of Constituent Assembly. First criticism is raised that it was not truly representative. Not a representative body. Because from princely states, it was based on nomination. The members were being nominated by the ruler of that princely state. When it comes to provincial assemblies, so there was indirect election. And when, when it comes to these members of provincial assembly, they themselves were getting elected by 10% of the people. Limited franchise was there. So how can this constant assembly represent the whole of India if the members were not uh, being uh, coming, they, they were not coming from the voice of the people of India. So this is a criticism which is raised. That it does not reflect the verdict of the people. But you can say that on practical grounds, you, can, you could not exercise such a big election within that short period which was available with us, right? So that is why it was done. Not a sovereign body because it was formed and based, it was based on cabinet mission plan and when it comes to its meetings, before the enactment of India Independence Act 1947, the for the meetings even we had to take permission from British, took great time in framing the constitution. As I told you, two years, 11 months, 18 days. When it comes to American constitution, it took only four months. But we have some arguments because due to the complexity of India, geography, diversity, right, the challenges we were having, that is why more time was taken, right? And our constitution is way, way elaborate than the constitution of America, Bill of Rights. It was dominated by Congress. This is one criticism. As I told you, that dominated by Congress, but it was based on consensus building. Domination of lawyers, politician, as our Jennings say about Indian constitution, that it is lawyer's paradise. Common individual, common Indian would be, you know, it would be difficult for a common Indian to understand Indian constitution. Criticism says that constitution of a country should be such that even a common man can understand that. Right? So this is criticism. Dominated by Hindus, this was another criticism, but you should know that representation was there across gender, across, when I say gender, it means women were there, uh, uh, representation uh, across caste was there, means caste and means SCs, STs were also, was the criteria of ensuring representation, religious based representation was also ensured, Anglo-Indian were also ensured. So I hope <coughs> you got the journey of the making of Indian constitution. Now. Open your book, Lakshmi Kant, and read. Now, it will be a cakewalk for you, right? Although, if you have gone through it, grown through this video, I would advise practice MCQs from this section, and you will be set to go, because important informations are being incorporated along from Lakshmi Kant as well as from other uh, sources. So, this PPT, this PDF will be available in this Telegram group. If you have some doubt, you can connect with me in town. 
or Twitter. See you in the next video. Till then, keep learning, keep growing.